What's going on, motherfuckers? It's Yogi Obes. Yesterday, I went to the mall. I stood in line at this Italian sandwich place, and I was just standing in line. This girl that was definitely exactly my type walks by. And she's my type because she has an hourglass figure, wide hips, very feminine face. Generally, if she has those wide hips, everything else kind of just fits. I looked at her, but then I immediately looked away. And part of the reason has to do with the fact that I've been kind of out of the game, the chase, whatever you want to call it, for a long time. I haven't really been interested to approach women, just viscerally. I just don't feel that same interest. Nevertheless, that was still pretty bad because I knew that the reason I'd wanted to look away was because of the narrative today that Gillette presented to us, that feminism presents to us. It felt like I was back in high school where every time my crush would walk by in the hallway, which wasn't often, but she was a some kind of Nordic ancestry, blonde, blue-eyed girl who was on the field hockey team. I would purposely make my best effort to not look at her at all because I felt that looking at a woman was disrespectful. I thought that showing interest and even touching her, touching her hand and, and so on, could be too much and disrespectful. And those issues persisted actually for a while into my uh, late teens and partly into my early 20s. I realized though that the only thing that was wrong was me. You know, I never grew up seeing intimacy as my parents were asexual with each other, never holding hands, never kissing. So I kind of just had to figure it out on my own. And I worked hard in my early 20s to learn how to actually look at a girl first so that I could talk to her eventually. The message in Gillette's video agrees with my high school self. Checking out women is a crime. They will approach us now. They will let us know who deserves to be dated. We're not allowed to choose anymore. We're the product, they're the consumer. We do what they say now. Which is kind of funny because this short film by Gillette was both a take on the Me Too movement and how men need to listen to the Me Too movement, and it was a stance on anti-bullying. Yet it feels like we are the ones getting bullied by the mainstream media, by our universities, by the workplace, and now men's, formerly men's companies for liking girls and wrestling. Seems a little hypocritical. Here's a comment that keeps getting deleted. From another forum, another user, I work for Procter & Gamble, the company which owns Gillette, I have to tell you that this stuff goes all the way to the top. A VP said in a 100-person meeting that she will never promote a white man again. There was a diversity training I was forced to go to that put up two pictures, one of a white male team and one of a non-white male team. And we were asked, I know it's an obvious answer, but look at these two teams. Who would you rather work with? Then they hired a black intern right out of college. He was decent, but not great, and had his summer boss give him an offer letter. The salary was 15% higher than the manager, which had worked for the company for 13 years. The manager quit two weeks later. The project they were working on fell apart. I've never been more miserable working anywhere in my life. I've heard other stories from friends just like this, friends who've interacted with higher ups in corporate settings. And what's pretty clear is that corporate America is kind of forced to abide by certain non-discriminatory standards. It's a leftist agenda of tolerance, anti-racism, superficial diversity, affirmative action, victimhood, and misandry in every corner of America. If it weren't for this agenda, you wouldn't have found me here on YouTube. It's almost as if men are being treated like terrorists now, and I'm considering growing back my ISIS beard because, you know, it's the, it's the migrants in Sweden that actually need a lesson on Me Too, but because of the leftist policy of tolerance and inclusivity of underprivileged minority groups, they get a free pass. See, the issue is that the more pressure you try to put on something, the more pressure just wants to escape. The more you try to prohibit something, the less effective you are. Prohibition doesn't work. Preventing women from voting was a bad idea. Locking them up in the kitchen doesn't work. Obviously them working all the time doesn't work either, but I think any patriarchal man who truly cares about women would understand that, would understand both sides of the story there. And telling men that wrestling, young boys wrestling is bullying doesn't work. 
telling men that we're not listening to women, that we can't check out a woman's ass when she walks by, that's not going to work. Telling men that the phrase boys will be boys implies that boys are one step away from becoming a criminal doesn't work. It's why young men like this feel attacked. He says, when Gillette attacks the only demographic they have. And then he's patronized by a woman here in the comments, uh, Lisa, the, the second reply down. They don't attack you. They're trying to enlighten you. Obviously, the majority of you is not ready. Proud fuck boys, I guess. It's sad. You see, this is the same exact energy in the Me Too movement. It's like, you, 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 you. And it's equivalent to slut shaming and fat shaming, which as much as we'd like to think otherwise, isn't an effective strategy to get people to change their ways. So why did Gillette do this? Well, it's because the feminists that work there profit off toxic masculinity, aka the recent trend of women taking up masculine traits to try to compete with men and forget their feminine past. They try to live like men, fiercely and independently, all while being female, having periods, menstrual cramps, and everything that is uniquely a womanly experience. When you combine that with trying to take on a masculine persona, you get a bunch of nagging women. And Gillette came up with an ingenious solution to this problem. Instead of trying to understand the root cause, they chose to enable it. It's kind of like a man who just agrees with his annoying girlfriend on her period just so she shuts the hell up. Or he buys her a gift for damage control or just to prevent future problems. What separates that man from the red-pilled man is the fact that that man is pussy-whipped and has chosen to submit to her a needy pushover. This is the last type of guy women, including feminists, are attracted to. See, men know this dirty little secret about feminists, which is that many of them like to be dominated actually more so and more aggressively in some cases in the bedroom than normal women who haven't drank the feminist Kool-Aid. I don't know why that is, but it might be because when they try to suppress men, they realize that they need them even more. The fact that a formerly men's shaving company doesn't understand these basics just shows you how hard they're trying to virtue signal. See, what women really want in the wake of the Me Too movement is a man that is still attractive, but just understands them. And that, unfortunately, is a very nonverbal thing. It's not something you tell a woman about because once you start telling them about it, you stop doing it. You just do it. Gillette has failed to teach men how to be better because, first of all, women do not understand how to make men better. They are the consumers. We are the products. It's our job to be better men. It's our job to learn what consent truly means, to understand what she's communicating when she's emotional, complaining, when she's not satisfied with something we're doing. And that's why all women can really do is point the finger and complain so loudly that they get our own brands to point the finger at us as well. Unfortunately, that tactic has never worked and will never work.